Hey y'all, it's Megan. Welcome back. Tonight I'm fixing a real traditional Appalachian meal. Uh, probably been fixing this kitchen hundreds and hundreds of times, not just by me, but by those before me. Um, and I just want to share it with y'all. Uh, we're having country ham, red eye gravy, eggs, straight out the chicken coop, and homemade biscuits. So y'all stick around, it's gonna be good. The best tip I can give you when cooking from scratch at home is I always start with what's gonna take the longest. And I forgot to mention just now, we have fried potatoes too, so. Potatoes will take the longest. I seen a meme floating around uh, Facebook here a while back. It said, my toxic Appalachian trait is I think potatoes go with every meal. Well, y'all, that's my toxic trait. I don't think it's toxic. I love potatoes. I literally, every meal, I could eat potatoes with every meal. When we got fresh potatoes coming in, you better bet we're having some form of potato every single night, okay? Tonight is fried potatoes. I got me a little butter in my pan over here. Some potato chunks in there. So y'all, I gotta tell y'all, the Lord is good, he is so good. We, over this weekend, which won't be the weekend by the time y'all see this, but over the weekend, we have had two inches of rain. Now, ain't that a blessing? Ain't he good? Because I told you, it might get us a little antsy sometimes, but he'll give us what we need. And uh, tickled to death over that rain, hoping that the, well, I mean, I was going to say hoping that the garden perks back up, but shoot, it's already perked back up. You look out there, everything looks so green. The grass looks green. We had already had to put out two rolls of hay to the cows and the horses. The grass and the pasture are starting to green up a little bit. Just makes me happy. <laughs> you ain't never cooked fried potatoes like this. I don't know what you're missing, y'all. These are some fresh red potatoes that we went down there and dug the other day. Still gotta get up all of our white potatoes. They wasn't quite ready when we got these red ones up, so we're gonna give them just a little bit longer. Papa always said you wasn't supposed to get them up during the dog days, but it always seems to fall during the dog days when it comes to get them up. Um, have y'all ever heard that? My papa used to say that all the time. All right, so I'm just gonna let these go to frying and keep an eye on the grease in the pan. May need to add a little more. Well, I mean, I know I will. These potatoes will suck it up over time. So I'm gonna let them get going. I gotta get started on the biscuits. Got my oven preheated. I got two cups of all-purpose flour here in my bowl. I'm going to put a whopping tablespoon of baking powder. I ain't going to put no baking soda because I ain't using buttermilk, so I don't need no baking soda. I'm just going to make sure all that's mixed together. No, my flour's not sifted. I've had people call me out on that on videos before. I don't ever sift my flour uh, unless I'm making like a cake or something. So my biscuits turn out just fine. I want to make sure all that's mixed in together good. Pinch of salt, about a teaspoon, I'd say. I like to put just a pinch of sugar. You don't have to be precise. Just practice makes perfect. And shoot, mine don't always turn out perfect. These right here might not turn out perfect. The mood I'm in, sometimes I use butter, sometimes I use lard, sometimes I use both. To be completely honest with you, so. Yeah, four or five tablespoons, I think. Now we're just going to work this in. Take us a little bit, a minute, y'all. You want your butter, you want your butter to be incorporated until it almost favors cornmeal. It's gonna be kind of rough. 
You don't want no giant ch chunks of butter in there. Alright, that looks pretty good. Pretty good. We're going to do about a cup of milk. Yes, I know this is a dry measuring cup. It just is what it is. You know it's going to be a little sticky and that's okay because these are actually going to be my pretty biscuits as I like to call them. Sometimes I make ugly biscuits, sometimes I make pretty biscuits. These, I'm going to make y'all some pretty biscuits tonight. Flour, just add on the counter. I just want to make it as smooth as I can. So what we're going to do is we're going to give this biscuit a little bit of a layer. You can do this with a rolling pin. I don't, I just do it with my hands. So we're gonna flatten that out. We're gonna fold it back on itself. Flatten it out again. And we're gonna do that one more time. And we'll be ready to cut them. Pans preheating in the oven. All right, now we're ready to take our biscuit cutter. You can use a glass, use whatever you got. I happen to have biscuit cutters, so we're gonna use. Don't twist, push straight down. They're gonna head into a 425 oven for about 15 minutes. What's your favorite thing to do with leftover biscuit dough? You know you can fry it and grease and make you like some little donuts. Next thing we're gonna fix is our ham. I'm gonna put a little of my lard in here. Now you're gonna say, Megan, why in the world you put lard in there and you fixing to cook ham? Well, the reason being, is I'm gonna make red eye gravy with this and come to find out it helps if you got a little extra grease that makes your gravy a little better. So uh, this is just something trial and error. sitting there saying what in the heck is red eye gravy it is grease and coffee ham grease and coffee uh, and it makes it is great we like to uh, put molasses mix molasses with it um, and dip biscuits in it's my this is actually what I'm cooking y'all tonight this is my husband's like all-time favorite meal so look at here now that right there is a piece of ham now we cure all our own country hams. These are from our hogs. Um, we do it the old fashioned way. I would show you that, but some things are just better left secret. <laughs> um, it's an old recipe that my husband's family uses. I mean, talking about going back hundreds of years. So, um, you know, I might get haunted if I start giving out stuff like that. But I'm gonna cook this whole piece. It'll strip up a little bit. And actually, ham is cured, so technically, well, the way we cure it, it could be left out, um, but we freeze it. I vacuum seal and freeze it. But it could technically be left out and technically don't have to be cooked. I'll tell y'all, you're gonna notice that my ham probably cooks up a little different <clears throat> and looks different than what you're used to buying from the store. So, them hams you buy in the store, they're like 
quick cure. They're injected with like nitrates and stuff. That's what makes them so pink. That's why my hand ain't pink. Um, but they're injected with the cure and stuff and the nitrates and everything. Um, another reason that's why they're so salty. This ham right here is not nearly as salty as the ham from the store. But this process to cure a whole ham takes at least six months, not longer than that. Um, cause I don't believe they've even sliced their hams that we did back in the winter. Not yet. Um, so that's why I just wanted to tell you that cause you know, people may look at this and say that ain't country ham, but it is. It's just home cured country ham. See there? Pretty biscuits. Now I got me a little butter. We'll go around the top of them. Alright, I gotta pour out this extra grease over here. We we'll wanna keep that. You better let them sit there a minute so they don't stick. Now all that's going to take is wiping that out. See how it's not really stuck. It's just, those are just the extra pieces. Alright, add another little dab of lard. Taking my pan, took me about a half a second to wipe them eggs out. I'm gonna add my ham grease back in there. So you're gonna need about six ounces of coffee. Um, is about how much I put in it anyway. And right now I got my cure egg going over there, making me six ounces of coffee. Wouldn't great grandma have give her arm and leg probably cure egg makes the coffee. She would never believe that. <laughs> um, so it don't take about a second to fix me six ounces of coffee. And now you can do it one of two ways. You can either add flour to it, um, which I've done it that way. And I personally like it better that way. Um, make it a thick gravy or you just add the coffee and grease and that's all you do and you're done, um, which is Andy's favorite way. So tonight I'm just, I won't be adding any, um, any flour. Got my six ounces of coffee. Pour it in. And boom. We've got red eye gravy. I just think to myself, you know, as I get overwhelmed with the stuff coming in the garden, and my kitchen is an absolute wreck constantly. Like, you can't cook like this and not and not be a wreck. I hate to tell you, <laughs> but it, especially this time of year, like everything's just, I feel like it's a mess all the time. But you know what? There's been a lot of meals cooked in this house, in this very kitchen right here where I'm standing. You know, the instead of looking as, at it as a mess, I'm trying to change my mindset to look at it as blessings. My floor is covered in boxes of potatoes, cucumbers, squash, <laughs> tomatoes laying in every little corner, you know, right now. It's just the way it is. Got canners sitting in the floor because it's a small house. I don't have very much storage and I'm not digging these canners out every time I need them because I'm using them right now about every other day, sometimes every day. So right now they're just parked in the floor, you know, so I guess I'm telling you this to be, to just tell you, don't be overwhelmed this time of year. Count your blessings.
instead of feeling overwhelmed, try to count your blessings. The blessings that you have coming into your home and that you're able to do this stuff. And you know, you've learned this skill of cooking, even though it makes a darn mess. You've learned it and you've got all this food. You're surrounded by food from your garden. What a blessing from God that is. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and we're going to get us a plate fixed. All right. So this is Andy's favorite meal. So I told him I'd uh, record him fixing his plate. Tell him how you like to fix it, Andy. Yeah, it don't get much better than this right here. Well, gotta have the eggs. And I'll take, uh, what can I get these over there? It was a spatula over there. That was for the gravy. Yeah. Got one plate fixed here. And here comes the good part. We got some molasses that one of my good friends makes. And I'm gonna tell you what. I don't know what they do, but they get it right. And then take that red eye green. You gonna have to hold the pan up. Yeah. Put it out over top of that glass. I don't know, I may be the only one that does this. This is the way mom and daddy always done it. And if you ain't never tried it, you should try it. It's good. It don't get much better. Y'all, I'm gonna tell you right now, I can live off a of country ham. To me, now, I'm not talking about store-bought country ham. I'm talking about real country ham. I mean, I can live off of it. This little one right here loves it, too. It don't get no better. It's just like, to me, just like eating candy. I don't know. It don't get much better than that. Then take your biscuit, dip it down in that molasses and that red-eyed gravy. Mm -mm. Let it soak it up a little bit. You don't know what good eating is unless you eat that. Uh, the good, Maggie? Uh -huh. What's this? Okay, yeah. But what I said about store bought ham. No. I like this ham. Good. I really can't eat store bought ham. Store bought ham, it's just like anything else store bought. It ain't good. You gotta have a real country ham for the beef. And that's a sugar cured ham. I told them that I might get haunted if I give away y'all secret recipe of hundreds of years. Yeah, we can't tell nobody. It has very few people that know it. Which it ain't very complicated either, but But it's good. And then boys that make that molasses. Apparently they got some kind of secret going on too because I ain't never eaten no molasses as good as theirs. Molasses making in itself is a tradition that's really going away fast. I know of two people around here that do it. And both of them are way on up in age and I don't know if anybody will ever carry it on after they quit. And the way I like to do it, the one out there and I pick me a tomato, This time of year, I eat tomato on the side of everything. Don't know, Andy. You do. You live off of tomatoes this time of year. All right, y'all. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a little something. And get out there and make you some red eye gravy. It sure is good. And anyways, I'm going to get to eating supper, and I'll talk to y'all next time.